that's what I'm talking about. Hey, what's going on, Predators? It's Travis here. Uh, we're going to do a quick video here about the uh, review on the base maps hunting app. So, so we have talked about this app a little bit before. I uh, wanted to kind of go do an in-depth review like with it, like I have with uh, Onyx Hunt Maps and with HuntStand. So HuntStand and Onyx are two of the apps that I use on a regular basis for, you know, my mapping, uh, hunt land planning and things like that. Uh, and also to use while I'm hunting. Um, somebody suggested to me to do this review here on the Base Maps app. And so I've been using it for about a week and a half now. Uh, in the field, uh, out on the daily air and some things like that to kind of see how I like it. So base map does have a few options as far as pricing. Uh, one of them is the free version, which gives you about three different uh, basic map layers. Uh, it's going to be just your regular satellite view, uh, Google Maps satellite view, and a, uh, I think a simple topo map here. So. Uh, with the uh, pro features, you will get uh, for $29.99 a year. Uh, that includes basically all of their map layers, over 14 different base map layers, as well as a whole bunch of different add-ons uh, for $29.99 a year. So it's not bad. They do allow you to pay month to month. It's $4.99 a month. Um, with that $4.99 a month, you get uh, basically all of those same pro features. Uh, but you will end up paying $60 a year instead of $30 a year. So by buying a yearly in advance uh, subscription to the app, you will be saving about 50%. So let's go ahead and open the app here. All right. So the first thing we do is whenever it opens up, we are uh, loaded into the last map that we had saved here. Okay. Uh, I've made a few marks here and uh, I'll go over to those in just a minute. Uh, one thing I did want to note here as well, though, is that uh, the map quality this is the first initial map quality that i'm seeing on here but versus the other two apps that i've been using for this same feature the map quality on base map is excellent so it's about the same par same quality as i've seen with hunt stand they're both very similar um, this is a, a very clear map on x map still is just kind of far behind there the clarity of the map is just not there compared to these other two apps so uh, whenever we first open the map here, you see I've got this, uh, I've got these buttons across the top of the map here that give me a little bit of uh, direction on what I'm doing. So uh, then I've got these over here on the side, which are my kind of in the mapping features, um, the map features that I'll use to change the layers, favorite an area, and add markers and things like that. And then along the bottom, I've got a little taskbar down here. Um, this is where I can go straight to my map. I can jump to the uh, saved maps that I've got so for offline use and things like that the journal is kind of like the social aspect of it So if I uh, add something to the map, I can just post it for everybody to see uh, Also, I can take pictures and things like that and post on here So it has kind of more of a social media aspect a little bit more in depth in depth than what we saw on hunt stand um, Or on X kind of almost like having the uh, I don't know if you ever tried the go wild app It's kind of like a social media app for uh, or like an Instagram for hunters and things like that. So nice little touch that they've added there. It doesn't seem to be too popular yet, but it's picking up um, and going forward. I can edit my profile. And then of course the gear drop, which is the, uh, basically they give you free gear giveaways and things like that using the map, which is kind of a cool idea. So they will give away free gear and things like that through the app. Uh, but the way they do it is by making you use the app. So you have to use the features of the app to try to find um, a specific mar specific location on the map or a specific landmark and whichever person is closest uh, to where this you know gear drop lays is the person that gets it okay so starting at the top over here uh, as you see just one finger I can scroll around the map here two fingers zoom in pretty straightforward okay I've got my weather data over here if I tap that little icon and it comes up so it shows me the time that it was loaded that data, which it's at 8.55, which is about five minutes ago. Um, so top here, I've got my actual weather here. So if I tap that, it's going to give me the current location, very detailed. I like the look of this app. You can see it's got this kind of a, a highlighted like green color, a green accent, um, very nice 
simple backgrounds and things like that. It's a very clean feeling app. I really like that. Uh, you can change your current location. You can uh, label whichever you want just by tapping this box up here. You can search for a new location. All right. Um, so it has highs, lows, average, and you can even get a seven day forecast down here at the bottom. Okay. And what's really cool is it actually shows you where uh, that weather information is coming from. Okay. Let's go back. Uh, next over here, I got the wind direction. Again, it's another thing I can touch. I love how you can touch these icons and it gives you a lot more detail about that specific thing. Uh, this is showing a south southwest wind, um, two miles an hour right now. And it shows you on a sliding scale, whether it's calm or it's, you know, kind of hurricane force winds there. Uh, see the speed, uh, what the high the gusts are going to be like, and then what the wind chill factor makes the temperature feel like. Uh, next down here is the so lunar or the lunar phases. Uh, so I can see this is a 69% uh, waning gibbous right now. Uh, it shows me on a calendar here how that moon phase is going to change. So lots of great information there. Also shows me when the moon is going to rise and when it's going to set. Okay. Next over here is the, the solar times. So actually it separates the solar and the lunar. A lot of these apps actually combine the two of them and call it so lunar, you know. This is actually the solar phase here. So you can see sunrise at 701, sunset at 609. Uh, so it just gives you exactly how many daylight hours are there, which is really cool too. Lots of information. I like more information rather than less. I would have, a, I would rather have a little bit more complicated layout and more information and more information than to have it simpler with less information. So more is better, right? Uh, next down here, like I said, again, sunset time. Oh, this is the moon here. Uh, again, that's the sunset time. It shows you again what time the sun's going to set every day. A little bit of extra information. I'm going to kind of feel that place a little bit. But uh, Next is the barometer, right? So it's going to show you the barometric pressure. Right now we're having a nice high pressure day. Uh, then it's going to show whenever you go into a stormy weather, things like that. Then it's going to show that little gauge. I like this kind of old school feel with the dial, the needle on there. Uh, matches the one I've got on the back porch there. Uh, shows my altitude, uh, temperature, and humidity here. So a little bit of redundant information, but that's all right. And I can also switch it from uh, inches of mercury to millibar here if I need to. All right. Next over here, I got the settings, which kind of allows me to go through and change some of the things. I can change all my defaults, my moon phase, sunrise, all these different things I can change which that button does. I love customization and being able to customize these things is really great. Very good plus in here. All right, and then I can hit close to close that. Uh, next over here, I got search, so I can actually search for a location. So I'm just gonna search for DOS, Texas. There we go. This is uh, the city where our uh, hunting lease is at. And you can see on this map while I'm here, that you can see this area that I've already cached offline or my offline map. So whenever, this is really helpful that it actually shows you where that offline map boundary is. So if I'm using this out in the field, if I'm actually, uh, let's say I was hunting out west and I'm actually going outside that boundary, I know that I'm not gonna have as much detailed footage outside that boundary. All right. So once I find a place, you can see as I search for DOS Texas, and it'll show me, it allow me to favorite that place, which we'll go over more in a second. So as I rotate this map and everything, this is where this next button comes into play. So I can actually rotate this map and do everything. And then whenever I hit that arrow, then it's going to reset that to north, which is kind of a nice little feature. All right, so next down here, uh, over here in this corner is the map layers. This is going to show me all my different map layers. So again, I'm on the uh, monthly plan right now so it's showing me uh, the different uh, all the different layers without the pro layers uh, whenever you have the free or the base option there's only about three different layers I'll show you those in just a second uh, so the first one is the Google imagery of labels then I got the high resolution satellite imagery high res satellite topographical hybrid uh, the topo outdoors by base map Google terrain fishing map Topo, a fishing topo by base map, uh, ESRI world imagery, and a fishing satellite. Oh, and the USGS topo, world topo, Nat Geo world, and open street map. Okay, so some of these are a little bit redundant. There's, uh, you know, several different topographical maps and everything, um, but that's okay. Um, so let's look at this. Let's, you know, start with the Google imagery. We'll just take a look at the map here. Okay. 
very standard view here okay nothing crazy next over here go switch to the high res satellite image so now i close this so i'm not sure if it's actually higher res let's see let it refresh uh it's pretty good so i can see individual trails you can see that this is like the high res map here and then when i zoom in a little bit further it switches and so that the high res map information is only available at a certain zoom level which is kind of odd um, i know with like uh some of the other maps i've used like uh, hunt stand it doesn't matter what level i'm zoomed in at it'll only let me go so far so if that if that's all the detail that that map version has it'll just stop there it's kind of a blessing and a curse i guess that it will do this here because it's so this is our vivid satellite and then whenever i zoom in it will well, maybe not. Maybe I'm just having a glitch here. But anyways, it was cutting back and forth between the two. So let's go ahead and go back over here. We're just going to take a real fast look at all of these map layers. Next, I've got the high-res satellite topo. Uh, so, yeah, so this is the same kind of thing, except for it's got the topographical information overlaid over the map. Okay. So basically the high-res map with the topo. Topo, 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 I don't know. Okay. Uh, then I got the outdoors. This is a common thing. I think it's uh, the information is probably originally gathered in Google, but it's basically just kind of like an outdoors map. It kind of has a topographical overlay, but it shows different things like trails and, and things like that in the map. Really good for camping or uh, going on ATVs and things like that. Uh, Google terrain. Okay, this is a pretty cool terrain map. Unfortunately, this area here is not. I have a lot of terrain. There we go. You can kind of see it once I zoom out. Okay, so this is the Google Terrain map. Pretty straightforward. If you've seen any of my other videos, most of the other apps have this Terrain app as well, or Terrain View. Um, now we've got the Fishing Topo map, and this is one I haven't really figured out yet. So it's supposed to be a topographical map for fishing, uh, and I know that it does clearly denote like water and things like that. You see that blue there? So it, it does clearly denote this, but I haven't really figured out the purpose of this fishing map. So, for instance, if I go to a large body of water, it doesn't really give me any extra information about fishing. It just kind of shows the water a little bit bluer, you know, and which is fine. All right, so moving on over here, we've got the ESRI World Image Link. This is just another, another view. It's kind of like, and if you watch my review of the Hunt Stand app, this is kind of like the high-res satellite image map on there it's just got a little bit of higher contrast and things like that so you can see the difference between the ground and the trees and honestly this is what it, this area looks like a little bit um, in more detail like this is kind of what it looks like on an average day the normal maps layers have kind of a green wash to it where everything kind of looks just generally green whereas this is more realistic to what it actually looks like there next over here is the fishing satellite map again i really like this include fishing data but I haven't really found out a huge use for it yet. So this whole area is going to be great fishing land, but I haven't really figured out how to use this map for that. So it's kind of really, really nice looking, kind of accurate fish, or actually accurate water uh, data there, I guess. This is how the water looks. It's very sandy because of all the rivers that dump into it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's. I'm not sure what this map is for specifically made for but I do like the view of the water on there uh, especially for certain areas it's probably gonna look really bad up here near Galveston you know, and the water's water's not that good quality so this is the Google Maps version of it uh, again I don't see any real benefit to that that layer that fishing maps layer maybe I'm not using it in the right spot I will allow that for that but I don't know doesn't seem to be giving any extra information or anything like that to me about fishing information. Uh, whenever we get to the other layers, uh, the not the base map, but the actual other layers, um, it'll we'll talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so this is just a Nat Geo topo map. Okay, it's just a little bit different view. It's a little bit more brown and less white and gray. Um, to each their own. And then the Google, try the Open Street Maps. Which is the same kind of thing. It gives a little bit of a topographical map here. Alright, so I'm going to go back to the Google imagery here. 
Now we're going to look at the different uh, things here. So first one I got is nationwide parcel ownership. Um, you can see also it tells you here if it's available offline. I can click the heart next to it and I can add it to my favorites over here in the top. I can also see which active layers I've got. So I like the organization of that. It's very, very nice. Uh, so I'm going to touch that there. Okay. Let's hit X to go back to our map. All right. So this is pretty cool. It actually overlays, unlike a lot of the parcel data where you have to touch it and then it brings up that information that it actually overlays it on top. Okay, so it's pretty cool how that works. Pretty accurate as well. Next, I got nationwide government lands. Okay, this kind of shows what the different types of government lands there are. You have to zoom out for that. We are in Texas, so most of the land out here is privately owned. You can see if we go over here, we see some definitely government owned lands. It gives you some information about those areas. So state trust land, BLM. This is the Wachita National Forest. So you can see the overlay there. It's going to show the actual terrain and everything here. So that's pretty awesome. If I touch it here, does it give me any more information? Yeah. So it pops as a little pop-up. gives me a little bit more information. Uh, it shows the state, how many acres it is. Pretty cool. Turn that off. Next, we'll go to the parcel coverage. Um, so in each coverage for each county. Okay. So this is basically just a list of all the counties and shows where the county's in. Um, looking at your different counties is actually kind of important, I think, because a lot of places have, um, the best way to put this. So a lot of different places, each from one county to the next can have completely different regulations when it comes to hunting. So knowing where those lines are, uh, is actually pretty important at times. So like if I go from here in Texas, if I go from, uh, one county to the next, if I go from, uh, you know, Lavaca County to something else over there, the, um, counties actually have quite a bit different restrictions. So one county might have an antler restriction where you have to have at least a 13 inch inside spread and the one next to it might not have any restrictions on there. So keep that in mind. So next over here is the nationwide designated wilderness areas. Okay. So this is uh, wilderness areas as designated by the government. Okay, Black Fork Mountain Wilderness Area, Upper Comanche Road, let's see, it's pretty cool. If I touch that area, it does give me more information and it actually gives me a website that I can follow to it. You're designated, things like this, a lot of information. Again, more information is better. This looks very similar to what I see on Hunt Stand, gives you a lot of the same information and stuff like that, okay? So coming over here next, we've got the, the designated roadless areas. So the roadless areas is a very handy map feature to have because it helps you whenever you're hunting, especially going out west or something like that, where you can actually see uh, in very good detail um, where the areas that are not accessible by road are. So that way that whenever you're going out there, you can get further and further out and not have to worry about seeing other people and not having people hunting in that exact same area as you. So turn this off. Let's go look and see what we got. Okay, so look, this is showing a lot of different areas here. Prohibited. This is showing uh, areas, um, you know, roadless areas. It says prohibited, though. I'm not sure what that means exactly. Mother Hubbard, roadless area rule. I'm guessing the roads are prohibited. You can't have roads in that area is what that prohibited means. It shows you the construction, um, all these different things and uh, what's in that area. You'll probably have to count the number of times I say pretty cool in this video because there's a lot of cool little features in here that I like. So federal land food storage restrictions. Let's check this out. I'm not sure what this is. So Gila National Forest or Gila, depending on how you pronounce it. Uh, so food storage required, no requirement found, but the Gila National Forest has a resident population of black bears. So I guess this is really good for when you're hunting. It shows you like, okay, whenever you're out and you're hunting like you may want to watch how you store your food like you may have to hang it up in a bag so the black bears don't get to it something like that state boundaries pretty straightforward i'm not gonna even go through that one basically just shows all your state boundaries county boundaries exact same thing all the counties in the u.s it shows what those boundaries are again for hunting regulations uh, and state regulations those are helpful because they can show exactly where everything's divided at uh, township range selection boundaries i hadn't really figured this one out yet um, I mean, it's just got these, you know, 5S, 19W, um, 
I'm not really sure how you would use this. You can touch each one. Again, you can get a little bit more information in it. This is New Mexico. Uh, it shows you all these divisions and everything. Uh, I'm not really sure how you'd use that, but you know, again, more information is better. I'll stick with that. Uh, this is the same kind of thing, the US Topo quad boundaries, okay? I've never used these, never thought about using them, so I'm not sure how all that works, but again, same thing, more information is better. Looks like it's still a very detailed map, uh, which I like that. Look how when you can see like individual trees on there and stuff like that. This is what I love. I love very, very detailed maps. Onyx maps, is, this is their hugest um, drawback is that their maps are not detailed enough. It's just, I, I can't see the maps that clear. It looks like they're fuzzy or hazy or something like that. I don't know. They need to work on that though. And then the military reference grid system. So again, same kind of thing. I don't know. I guess if you're like saying like, Hey, I'm here in 12 SYB and you're in 12 SYC. Uh, I don't know how you'd use it, but that's yeah, kind of cool. More is better. All right, next over here, we got water. So this water depths, this is kind of cool. You only have it for the East Coast and the West Coast. There, finally, there is a Gulf Coast. Like the other day, whenever I was viewing this, there was no Gulf Coast available, but here it is. So let's check that out. All right, so this is pretty cool for fishing here. Uh, so it shows you how deep the water is in a specific area. Look at Matagorda Bay here, doesn't have any information there. There we go, the Gulf's about 20 feet, 30 feet, 10 feet, okay. It's just kind of random information here. It's not really attached to anything here. It's just showing 10, 30, 20. So 50 feet deep out that far. Yeah, it's pretty cool for fishing. I, I would really like to have that. Nationwide fishing points of interest. Again, I, I really like that they included fishing data in this as well because a, a lot of hunters are not just hunters. We're also fishermen and stuff. So this is really nice to be able to have this extra information. I've noticed with this layer, it takes a little while to load because there's just an overwhelming amount of information. Um, okay, so what's this? I touch it. Ah, okay, it shows me the location of Academy here. That way if I want to go pick up some stuff, I can. Let's see what's this, another Academy, yeah, another Academy here. This is showing me just a bunch of spots to go buy your stuff, which is very helpful if you need to find a bait shop or something like that, okay. Fishing points of interest. So it's going to show you different like fishing like piers. You're going to show you like stores that are going to have uh, you know bait shops and things like that. Academy where they're going to sell a fishing gear, Cabela's, whatever it is. It's going to show all those things and they're pretty cool. Uh, nationwide flood hazard zones. Um, I guess places that are prone to flooding. Okay. So wow, that's pretty cool. Of course, it's, of course, Shreveport. Of course, it's Louisiana flooding, right? So these are places that are prone to flooding over here. It's kind of nice to know. Let's see. I don't know what any of this information means, but yeah, you know, it's pretty cool. At least you know if you're in a flood zone or not. Uh, during the high rain seasons, you can make sure you're not in that flood zone or make sure that you're prepared if you are in the flood zone. All right, next is nationwide lakes, uh, nationwide boundaries layer that represents major lakes and reservoirs. Okay, so we're looking at a lake right here. Swan Lake, it's a lake, okay, 118 acres. So it doesn't give you a lot of information there, but you know, that's fine. I mean, it just helps you recognize these boundaries, make it a little bit easier to see. Green Lake, 34 acres, all right. Again, not a lot to see here, but I think using this in conjunction with some of the other layers, which you can use multiple layers at one time. So I could use like, you know, that and this together, okay. And then I could see, you know, if there's like, this is my lake boundary and then here's you know, like a Bass Pro Shop that's right next door. So, you know, whatever you need to do. Or if I'm taking my boat out too, I can find out uh, where I need to go launch my boat at. Um, makes it easier to see the lakes too. And rivers and streams, it does the same thing, but instead of outlining the lakes, it outlines rivers and streams. Uh, next over here is road and trails. Uh, so the US Forest Service uh, roads, okay, let's check that. Okay, there we go. Gotta zoom in a little bit more. All right, so these are U.S. Forest Service roads here. This is gonna be really helpful if you're if you're hunting uh, forestry land because that forestry land, a lot of times you don't have the best access to roads. You can't see the roads until you're just right on top of them. So very helpful. Nationwide roads, just a road map, pretty straightforward. Nationwide trails, this is the same kind of thing. It just shows you a little trail access throughout here. 
Okay, you can see these little green marks in here that denotes a trail. Uh, you can see it gets a little bit more detail every time I zoom in, which is really good. Um, I noticed that was another problem with Onyx maps that I've had is that the, um, the lines and stuff aren't as detailed. Sometimes they'll, they'll, as you zoom in, they'll get a little bit more detail, but not on every layer. So uh, that was a little bit of qualm of mine that I had with them. Uh, okay, points of interest. This is going to be like your parks and stuff like that. Uh, campgrounds, whatnot. This is really good to have if you're going to plan like a base camp. So you can go in, you can park, and you can make your base camp at that campground. And then, you know, hike in and have your camp that you, your, as you're out in the field, you know. Um, so wildfires and timber cuts. Okay. This is pretty cool. Again, you're gonna have to count the number of times I say it's pretty cool. It's, there's a lot of cool features on these, these apps. Okay. So apparently there's no information on there right now. That's fine. Sometimes we have that happen. Current wildfires. I guess the wildfires are out. Historic wildfires. Let's go ahead and turn these two on. Kind of timber cuts. And historic wildfires okay so that's kind of cool so the reason the historic wildfires thing might be good to know is because you can see about how long ago there was a wildfire in the area and a lot of times those wildfires they will clear out an area and you'll see that after those fires have been out for a while you'll start to see a lot of new growth in that area and those uh, a lot of animals love that new growth especially like deers and stuff like that all those little new growths that pop out of the ground they'll come by and mow those down um, and so uh, knowing where a forest fire has been can be helpful actually in your hunting. So let's type here. So yeah, this is a nationwide U.S. Forest Service timber cut. Equipment use, tractor logging, that's really helpful so you know what's going to be around there. It'll be big, you know, huge pieces of equipment or somebody with a tractor. Uh, gives you a lot of information in here. Um, okay, this is really cool. So uh, treatment can potentially... Um, or can recover potential mortality while producing merchantable material. I've never heard that word merchantable. Uh, thing includes the following chemical killing of unwanted trees with herbicide, uh, crown removal of trees. Okay, so it's really cool. There's tons of information. I really like that. Okay, let's go check in one of these other areas here. Looks like there was a fire here. 2016 halfway. I don't know what that means, but. Apparently there was a fire there in 2016. Alright, so next down here we've got the, the hunting section. We've got the proposed new public hunting access. So I guess these are going to be areas that are under proposition for becoming hunting land. So I'm going to look over here in Texas to see what it shows, if it shows anything. Uh, okay, so we've got the Hagerman National Wildlife Refuge. Spanning existing migratory game upland bird to 822 new acres. So that's really cool that it shows you new proposed lands. I don't think any of the other apps have anything like that. All right, next we got everything broken down by state. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm in Texas here. So let's look at what layers we've got for Texas. So this is kind of interesting because it shows you different species of uh, animals. So I got alligator, antelope, deer, um, mule deer, whitetail, elk, javelina, mountain lion, turkeys, and wild boar, okay? So with this, I can I can choose a species here and it's gonna show me different layers based on that. So I've got limited entry, alligator and OTC units, antelope, pronghorn units, okay? Mule deer, you can see the different mule deer here. White tail, all right. Rocky Mountain elk, huh, there's no elk in Texas. Um, javelina. All right, this is pretty straightforward. Shows you all the different counties and everything over it. You get over the counter tags for it. Um, mountain lion units, okay. Texas wild turkey limited entry date, season dates, and research data. There's one down here. Touch this over here, and basically what it just does is tells me that big box right here is just telling me what layer is this data I'm using here. And then right down here, it just tells me the unit. Okay, so this is the Powderhorn Wildlife Management Area. Far East, Northeast Texas. All right, so I touch that. And this is the Caddo Lake Wildlife Management Area. So again, it's pretty cool. It's got information there. A lot of the layers don't have a whole bunch of detail and a whole bunch of information, but they've got just enough to kind of give you a taste of what you need or what you'll be looking at in that layer. They're a little bit more specific to, um, you know, what's required of that layer, but 
Uh, it's kind of cool to see all those. This is one of my favorite things about all their layers here is how organized this is. So they've got the favorite section. So if I have a heart next to it, I touch that heart, it's gonna put that in my favorites, which is pretty cool. Uh, I've got active layers. So this is one thing that kind of bugged me about on X maps is I'd have so many layers on that I couldn't see the actual terrain in the maps, and especially with on X because it's such a fuzzy map that was having issues there. So with this here, I can actually see here which layers I have active. So if I turned on, you know, let's say I turned on like three or four different layers or something like that. Say I had like three different layers on. I can just come here to active layers. I can see all those active ones. And I can turn them off. Whereas with a on X maps, whenever I was using that to go turn those layers on and off, I'd have to go to search through and find which ones I had on, go search through the list and look and turn each one off. This works a lot better. I like that. It's more organized and just overall works better. Uh, also at the top here, I got this filter so I can filter hunting, hiking, fishing. It's cool. They included multiple sports in that and kind of divide it up by that. Uh, the next step over here though, is I think where this app kind of falls a little bit short. Okay. All right. So next we're going to talk about the different mag markers you can do. So first of all, I got this right here. I got this simple heart on the side over here. So if I touch this heart, I can just add a location there. And so then whenever I want to recall that location, I can just go to that saved location. I can tap here and I can name this anything I want. Okay. Uh, next over here is where I want to add map objects. Okay. So if I can, first of all, it wants me to share the app, right? It's telling me to get more people on board, which is okay. Uh, I can do location sharing, which is nice. If you got several buddies in the field, you can see exactly where each one of you are at. Most apps these days have that. Uh, I got the ability to download an offline map. Okay. I can create a new map. Okay. So I can either choose a standard map, which is, you know, three different map layers. So it's medium, low, or high detail, or I can go to the pro resolution. And so I can actually view this in a wide topo, or I can do a high res satellite image. I can change the map area, right? And then whenever I hit download, it's gonna download that map and I can save that for offline use. All right, next over here, I can also go to my save maps, which is the same thing as just, I can do get that as well, just by going here to the save. I can touch that and it just goes to right to that saved map that I have. So with the free version, you can only save one offline map. Uh, with the pro version, you can save as many as you want. So I can have as many hunt areas as I need, okay? Draw an object. So this is where I can do circles, shapes, or lines. So I've done that over here already. So you can see as I draw a shape, I can just use these different uh, little markers here. It's going to have me use a crosshair for it. So I can draw an object. Let's do a shape. Okay. So I can draw as I did here. I can move that the map around underneath that crosshair, which is my favorite way to do this by touching on the map. Like I think Onyx has you do where you touch your finger on the map to put points. It's very inaccurate. Um, if you were getting very specific with it, you have to zoom in real far and stuff like that. And I just like this because it's a lot more accurate. I can just put that crosshair exactly where I need it to go. Boop, add a mark, add a mark, add a mark, and so on and so forth around this circle. And then whenever I hit save, it's gonna save it. And what's really key to note this here is that it does show me the yardage of each one of those lines, okay? Keep that in mind. So that's a custom shape. Over here, I added a circle, pretty straightforward. The circle here, if I go back to the circle tool. So basically what this does is it's gonna show me this area, this circular area, and then I can name it just like anything else. The problem I have with the circle is that it's kind of weird. It's kind of wonky. So in order to get the circle, I have to zoom in to get it smaller, or if I'm gonna make it bigger, I zoom out with the map. So it looks like it's growing in size, but the circle is actually staying the same size. It's kind of kind of weird. Okay, save. Okay, but what's odd about this is you can see this one here. I can touch it, and if I touch it, I can see the measurement of it. But right here on a new one, it's showing me that it has a radius of 25 yards. Okay, so it's a 50 yard diameter of that circle there. But after you save it and you come back to it, that measurement goes away. I don't know if that's a, a bug or a glitch or something like that. But that having that measurement there just makes sense. Why wouldn't you get rid of it? You know, and I've tried touching the center of it and you can see, okay, well, it's got a perimeter of 0 0.09 miles. Okay. Area of 0.4 acres, but this doesn't, I, 
I would like to know if I have a circle there, what is the radius? What is the distance from the outside to the center, right? That just makes sense, but unfortunately it doesn't give us that information. And then the next tool over here is the, the line tool. This is a line there, which I can barely see it on this map, okay? But that right there is a line. And if I touch it, you can see I've noted this as a practice range. This is where I'm, I set up and I know a pretty good distance. It's about 25 yards here. But whenever I measured it with this, it doesn't show the distance on there. So I don't know why it doesn't do that. Uh, I've checked settings. The settings are all set to where everything should be fine. And I can touch that line and see it, but it, it doesn't just display it on there. But again, what's odd is if I do a custom shape, it shows all those measurements there. Like why wouldn't you just sh always show the measurements on all of my map markings? It just doesn't make any sense. So got a little bit of a problem with that, but you know, it's uh, not a huge thing, I guess. I can tap that every time I want to see it. But let's say I had multiple lines here. Um, I would want to make sure that I saw those all the time. Just a personal preference, but it seems like that's the way it should work anyways. Okay, next over here I can add a photo. This is pretty cool. You can see I did this over here where I added a photo right there. This is actually where I'm looking at my camera right now. Um, and the really cool thing about this, this is really good for whenever you're scouting out things. So if I'm on a mountain and I see across the next peak or the next valley over there, I can see, you know, the animal that I'm chasing, then I can actually take a photo of it with my phone. Hopefully I can zoom in enough, uh, take a photo of it, or maybe I can even use my spotting scope with it, take a picture of it. And then I can add that photo here. And then it also re records the forecast, moon phase, temperature, precipitation, all this stuff, all this extra information with it. So I can tell exactly what the conditions were whenever I spotted that animal. This is almost like having a mobile game camera, right? Because whenever you spot these things from a distance, you can mark that on the map. And so you can kind of track these animals and see, oh, well, this guy's only coming out at this time, this time, this time. Well, I saw three or four cows or I saw a herd of cow elk out there and uh, they were only out during the middle of the day at this time but then i saw when i saw the bulls they only came out in the later evening so anyways being able to track like that is really really cool i like this feature of it um it's not too much different from the way the hunt stand does the same kind of thing um this is really cool how it gives you a lot of extra information with that uh, i wish you could do it with the game cameras where you can add uh, a game camera there and it's like a repository of photos from that camera so that's one thing that hunt stand got really 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 right was that they can you can add a game camera as a marker on the map there and then you can have all your photos from that camera uploaded to that and also if you you know use a, a wild game innovations camera that you can actually sync that in there and you get 40 gigabytes of extra storage there so really cool stuff wish they would have done that here but maybe that'll come in the future all these things these apps develop as we go all right so added a photo, added a marker. Um, adding a marker is pretty simple. This is kind of another little issue I have with this besides, you know, the measurement thing. Um, so let's just put this as like a trailhead or something here, okay? So I'm gonna place my marker there. I can rename it, okay? Let's call it Fork in the Road. I can add any notes I want to, all right? But then I can tap over here and I can change the icon. So this is another little point of contention I have with this app is the icons are they have a lot of very odd choices in icons. So transportation, I got ATV, bike, boat, car, horse. Uh, I got for shelter, I got cabin, cave, home, RV, tent. Uh, I'm surprised there's no like clubhouse or something like that because if you're, you know, hunting at like a uh, somebody else's property, you know, usually they have like a clubhouse or if you're on like a lease, they have a clubhouse. So it's a little odd that there's nothing there for that, uh, but they've got cave on there. So, okay, that's cool. Hiking. Okay. So you got a kind, I guess, cairn. I don't know what you call it. I know what it is. It's a pile of rocks that you use to mark the trail, which is fine. Checkpoint geocache parking in a summit. And this is the really one that kind of really bugged me. Like these markers just make no sense. Okay. So think of all the wildlife out there that is hunted. Okay. Think of all the hunting that we do. If this is a hunting map, which is not just for hunting. I know it's for camping and for hiking as well. But let's say this is a hunting based app. It seems like the, one of the first markers I would have on there would be white tailed deer. Second would probably be elk. Then, you know, I would have maybe one species of bear and uh, maybe some hogs or something else like that. 
Um, I think those are probably the, in the U.S. the most hunted animals we're going to see. So why did they put alligator, antelope, two different kind of bears, and a bison? It, it really like that just makes no sense. Um, <laughs> you know, we, and there's no birds. At least put like you know deer, and that would cover you know white tail, black tail, sick uh, elk, um, you know pretty much everything in that category. Uh, in the deer family, then do like antelope, you know, which would cover any kind of goats in there, and you could maybe even put that for like a sheep, you know, bighorn sheep or something like that. Do one bear, so you can cover brown bear, black bear, grizzly bear, whatever, okay? And then maybe do something like for like a bison or some larger animals, or do another one that's like a reptile or something like that. If you're only going to put five markers in there, it just made no sense for them to put these markers there, okay? No sense whatsoever. And then for hunting, um, again, uh, you got a ground blind, which is good, blood, feeder, food plot, glassing point, all, all acceptable markers. I think there's some that definitely they could have added. What type of blind is it? So there's several different types of blinds. Uh, it's specifically put ground blind there. Why wouldn't you put like just blind and then you could have a tree leaner, a bipod, a, um, you know, a ground pop-up blind, you know, a tree stand so many different types of things that they could go in that category. It just seems like it would have made more sense for them to rethink these more or just add more than five markers in each category. This that's, that's frustrating to me, honestly, uh, fishing hell of a whole hell of a lot more markers they could have put here. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's, this part of this app, they did so good on everything else. This just felt really lazy. Honestly, fishing, you've got fish, log, school, stump. Okay. I would almost put alligator into that fishing category because when you're going to see alligators most often, probably when you're fishing, when you're out on the water, when you're out in the lake, when you're out on the rivers, when you're going to see alligators there. That would have made, you see, you have an empty spot right there. That would have made more room so you could put deer in there. Okay, something simple like that. Just somebody didn't really think that spot, that stuff through very well. And then property, you got a corner pin, a fence, a gate. I like to think about like at least five more things I would have put on there for pins. So, uh, gate, good. Fence, good. Corner pin, eh, I don't know. Uh, I would have put a lot of different things on there though. I mean, you can literally just use your imagination. I could have thought of a ton of different more pins on there. And at the bottom, you've just got these generic colored pins, which are basically a blank circle there. Um, you know, that's fine. I could, I could do anything with those, but it's just... I just felt like they didn't, they put so much thought and they put so much time in this app that I think they really dropped the ball here. Okay. So I can hit done and it's going to save that pin. I can touch it here. I can edit it. And another thing I can do is here is this little part, if I hit this log, then basically what it does is it adds this to kind of like my social feed, you know, that journal, and I can post about it. I can show people where I've added things to the map. Uh, maybe I added a feeder to it or something like that. I can do that and I can post about it. Okay. I'll discard that for now. And the the last thing here is this record a track. So with the record a track, <laughs> I had a couple of big issues with this, okay? The app started off really, really, really good. And then I had some several big issues here. So you can see I did a little record a track. I was moving um, actually in the car here. I did another one too while I was walking, but I, I just, I didn't have time to sit there and do this whole six mile lap thing or you know, go, go over a longer distance while I'm sitting there recording this. So what I did is I actually had a track here that I recorded while I was driving. I was going through the middle of town, so I only had to go, but I could only go about 25 miles an hour. So I wasn't going super fast. Um, some parts I was actually going really, really slow, which I'll show you in a second. Okay. So overall, like I said, it recorded my track pretty accurately. You can see I drove down here, uh, right at this point, a U-turn. Okay. I went around this way. Whenever I was taking that turn, I think I was only going about two or three miles an hour whenever I was doing that U-turn. So it's not, uh, it's pretty good. It's about on par with Onyx maps as far as how detailed or how much information I have in that track. Uh, this was actually, like I say, you can see it shows a straight line there. So basically as much detail as it's going to have in there is how many times it's pinging the GPS during that track. Okay. It's pretty accurate. I did another little loop through this parking lot here, and then I went back to go home. 
Now here's where the real problem with this all came, is whenever I went to take a right here, right before I turned right on the street, I had the phone, cause you know, I can't drive here with the phone in my hand. So I had it sitting in my lap, okay? Well, right before I took this turn right here on this street, I locked my phone, I turned my phone off. Whenever I did that, it completely stopped recording a track. So the timer in the background of how long I had been recording track was still going, but it completely missed out. I drove almost a mile and a half away while I was running some errands here, and I did not record any of that information. So with this map, if I close the phone while I'm recording a track, it doesn't keep recording that information, it stops. And I tried this on both of my phones. I have this, I installed this on my uh, backup phone that I have just in case it was a phone issue specifically. And it did that on that phone as well. So it basically, whenever I should close the phone, it stopped recording the track. So you basically, the whole time you're tracking something, you have to have your phone out and you have to be sitting there watching the phone um, as you're doing this. So that was a huge drawback to recording a track. It's not gonna leave you with a very accurate track, okay? Real quickly, we'll go down here at the bottom. You can see the map, different options over here. So I've got the map option that just takes me straight to the map. I've got the save maps here, okay? So whenever I come to, if I hit save, it brings up all my saved content. All right, so that's including my favorite locations, offline maps, uh, any photos that I've taken here, uh, markers that I've dropped anywhere, and uh, tracks that I've done, as well as shapes that I've created. I can scroll through here and select those different shapes. Okay. Next over here, I've got the journal, which is exactly what I was telling you whenever it's open. I double tap it apparently. This is where I've got, you know, kind of like a social feed where I can post things and see people's posts and whatnot. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, it's not something I really require because again, I have that other uh, Go Wild app. If you want to follow me on Go Wild, uh, I'll check out, I'll put the link in the description below. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's cool. It's not something I really use much in this app, but it's there. Uh, so you can see I got my profile screen here. It shows me how many uh, followers I got and all this stuff. That's about all I can really do here other than changing, you know, any of my information in here. Okay. And lastly, I've got the gear drop. Okay. So again, what I was, I was saying in the beginning, what it does is it outlines a very specific area on the map here allows you to then get hints. Then what you do is you just try to place a marker on the map. It gives you a guess marker and you put the marker on the map. And long story short, out of all the people that use base map, uh, after the time limit is up, then what it's gonna do is it's going to uh, allow you to, uh, or the, rather the closest person to where the actual gear drop occurred is going to win that prize, okay? so. Pretty cool little thing that they got there. Uh, nobody else does that. Um, anyways, nice to know. Not really something I care about that much. You know, if I really want something, some kind of gear, I'm probably just gonna buy it myself or save up to buy it myself. Uh, I'm not gonna require somebody else to give it to me for free or try to get it that way. Just, you know, seems like a waste of time. All right. So anyways, guys, this has been my review of base maps. Uh, overall, I give this a B plus and uh, as far as the app goes compared to the other two apps i reviewed the onyx hunt maps and hunt stand um personally this is i'm not i'm not paid by anybody of these people but i have to give hunt stand an a that's kind of my gold standard for features on a map they recently updated it was kind of a b plus for me but recently they upgraded hunt stand so that it does have offline maps which was really the one feature that it was missing i think and so now that they have offline maps on it, that is definitely my go-to for everything. I really altogether have stopped using Onyx maps. Uh, I would give Onyx maps maybe a C minus for uh, I mean, the biggest thing, maybe even a D because the map clarity on Onyx is just not there. They're not addressing it either. I've heard lots of people complain about it, especially anybody that uses base map or uses hunt stand. The maps in these two apps are just much more clear, a lot better. Um, what would get this app to an A for me would be um, to work on those markers because that is the one thing. It seems like a little, okay, you're kind of nitpicking, right? But that is the one thing that I use in this app the most are those markers. I'm dropping markers everywhere. I'm marking things. 
Um, I like to be able to see how those markers change over time. So if I mark this food plot here, I can say I sowed it on this date. I can add another information in there and say that on this date is whenever we you know, had the first growth, things like that. So I can track progress over time. Adding this thing to the markers is going to help a lot. And that's one of the biggest things about these map apps is adding markers to the map. So if you don't have that working, then the app itself technically is kind of suffering a little bit from that one thing. It's a great app, but it needs a few things to make it really that A plus go to all the time app. So thanks for guys for tuning in. This is Travis from Apex Predator Outdoors. And always remember, keep defying the odds.